Hello and good morning, Axe family and everyone else who's joining in this morning. Uh, man, it's so good to see you. And for those of you who are visiting with us or watching us for the first time, we just want to say thank you. I'm excited about today's message. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the marks of a mature Christian. How do we know someone's really maturing in the Lord? What does that look like? And today that is what we will be uh, looking at in God's Word. And so, man, I'm excited, family. So if you have your Bibles or your, your phone, you can turn to the Bible there as well. Uh, go to 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. That's where we'll be this morning. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. I'm going to pray and, and pray us in. And, and man, let's just welcome the, the, the presence of God right now in our homes or in our car or at the park, wherever you might be as you watch this message. And a good family, it is so good to see you this morning. And hey, feel free to comment. Feel free as I'm going through this message to be saying amen. Feel free to say hi, hello. Uh, man, you know, we're a community. And so, man, it, it's sometimes it's good for a brother or sister just to get to see, man, listen, there's brother uh, Joe Bob who I haven't seen in a while. But so feel free to do that. But let's pray. Lord, we love you. We thank you. We praise you. And we just worship you. God, I thank you for this morning. I thank you for this message that you have for us, God. And Lord, I, I thank you, God, that you desire that we would grow more to look like you, Lord Jesus. God, that we would truly image you, Father. And Holy Spirit, that we would really uh, allow you to empower and use us. So, Lord, would you give us eyes to see this morning? Would you give us ears to hear this morning? Would you help us to examine ourselves, to look at ourselves and ask ourselves this morning, man, are, are we will, really putting into practice what we need to do to look more like you, to, to talk like you, to, to walk like you, to image you well before this world that desperately needs you, God? that's so lost. So God, we love you. We thank you. Use us now. And Lord, I pray if anybody who's watching this does not know you as Lord and Savior, they would come to know you as Lord and Savior. I pray for those of us who find ourselves on the ropes maybe right now or even on the verge of maybe just uh, giving up or walking away, God, that we would be re-encouraged this morning to run back to you. Again, we thank you. We praise you. It's in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen and amen. So again, family, we'll be in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. And it says this, uh, actually a little bit before verse 8. Um, it says, Rather train yourself for godliness. For while bodily training is of some value, godliness is of value in every way, as it, as it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. And all God's people said, Amen. Family, as you know, or if you don't know, I'm a huge sports fanatic. Like, I, I love sports. And when I look at this verse and I see that, man, training yourselves and, and, and bodily training has some value, but man, godly training has even greater value, it immediately, immediately made me think of, uh, the sports greats like Michael Jordan, LeBron James, Akeem Olajuwon, and football, Tom Brady, Jerry Rice, Joe Montana, and uh, J.J. Watts. And then, you know, you, you got in baseball, Nolan Ryan, and Babe Ruth. And, and family, when, when you think about these greats, family, like that, that greatness, that they had to work for it. All those men talented. And everyone knew it. They had talent. But family, what made them great? Like, what made them where their names are, are talked about? Where they're considered on like the Mount Rushmore of their sports? Like, people debate, should they be up there? Like, not every athlete is debated, should their name be on Mount Rushmore? What, what made it where their names were debated, should they be on Mount Rushmore? Family, they put the work in. Like, they, they literally put the work in. Like, they, 
they, they would every year family look at, okay, where am I weak? Where am I strong? And how can I get better? Like and become one of the greats. So that, man, I excel at the sport I play in at every level. And family, as Christians, do, do we have that same mindset? Because this is what Apostle Paul, inspired by the Holy Spirit, is, is, is saying. He's saying, rather train yourself for godliness. For while bodily training is of some value, godliness is of value in every way as it holds promise for the present life and for the life to come and in other words family if salvation if christianity was just about salvation family then god would take us home he would beam us up when we surrendered our lives to jesus but but why are we still here because we see family scripture is very clear that we were created to glorify god we were created to worship him to be his image bearers. And so after salvation, God leaves us here so that we will be his ministers of reconciliation, that we will grow in him, that we will mature in Christ. And as we grow and mature in Christ, family, we image him well. We bring glory and honor to his name. And, and, and that it might draw all men and women and children to Christ. And so as we look at this message, I really want us to ask ourselves, do we have the marks that bear the mature Christian? You know, like, are we really maturing in the Lord? Do we have those marks, family? And, and so, before we go any further, family, know as, as I do this message, it's, it's not a, a, a checklist. Because we're Christians, we can be guilty because, I mean, we still have sin that we battle. And our, I mean, our flesh is prone. We are prone to wonder. It's easy to do a message like this and make it into a checklist. Well, if I just do this, check, 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 check. Family, if we make our life like a checklist and check here, check there, then we'll find ourselves falling into legalism. We'll find ourselves becoming self-righteous. That's not a mature believer. Amen? Like family, that the reason why we want to mature in Christ, the reason why we want to grow in Christ, the reason why we, we want to, to be in church and why we want to talk about Him is family is because He died for us. Like He died on the cross for us who were sinners, who were His enemies. And He took on God's wrath so that we could drink of the cup of grace and just know forgiveness and mercy. And family, He's risen from the dead. He's given us this new identity. We're now a new creation. And the Bible says He now intercedes for us like He's still serving us. He's fighting for us. And family, those things, because of grace, that should cause us to want to grow in Him, to mature in Him, to be like Him. Amen? Not a, a checklist. And so, before we, we even hit on the marks, family, in, in this church, you know, we, we talk about the five stages of discipleship. Five stages. Now, discipleship never ends. Even, and we'll see that a mature Christian is still growing in that fifth stage. Family, the five steps are, first step is spiritually dead. Like, at one time, all of us were dead. We didn't know Christ. We were separated from God. No fellowship. And then when we surrender our lives to Christ, when we become alive in Him, we're no longer spiritually dead. We're now family of spiritual infants. But we don't want to stay a spiritual infant. Like, my youngest daughter, praise God, is finally getting potty trained. Like, family, that I rejoice in that. Like, I don't want to be changing diapers anymore like and so a, a spiritual infant needs to, to know the basics where they're, they're not needy and you have spiritual child a, a spiritual child family we don't want to be there either like from infant we want to become a child but 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 what do children tend to do they they they, they got a basics they, they got a, a a grasp of okay here's this and this but they make it about them for example this message could easily be, oh, look at me, I'm doing this, and you're not. That's a spiritual child. 
And so a spiritual child is trying to figure out how to discern right from wrong. I'm learning as my daughter, who's about to be 11, like trying to help her to discern right and wrong. That, yes, sweetie, you know these things, but don't use it to insult. Don't use it to, hey, look at me. And then family of spiritual adult. Spiritual adult, it, man, it is, is really starting to bear the marks of a mature Christian. Understanding, okay, serve here, there. And family, where churches go wrong is we'll allow people to just stay as a spiritual adult. Well, man, look, they got a good foundation on the Bible, doctrine and all that. But God wants to take us further, family. He's called us to become spiritual parents. That's the fifth stage, spiritual parent. A spiritual parent can reproduce, multiplies, is raising up. And as we look at the marks of a mature Christian family, I really want to challenge the stages of spiritual adult, spiritual parent. Now, if you're a spiritual infant or you're a spiritual child, this message is for you. Like, that you should be going, I, I, this is where I want to go. And, and for us spiritual adults and spiritual parents, family, are, are, are we really putting into practice these things? And so... Let's hit on the, the marks of a mature Christian. Uh, the, the first mark, family, is a student of God's Word. Look at someone and say, student of God's Word. Feel free to comment right now online, student of God's Word. Like that's, that's number one. The marks of a mature Christian is a student of the Word of God. And look at what it says right here in 1 Timothy chapter 4. Verse 6, that's 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6. It says, If you put these things before the brothers, speaking to Timothy, his right-hand man, you will be a good servant of Christ Jesus, being trained in the words of the faith and of the good doctrine that you have followed. And, and so, family, I, I love this. What's he saying? Be trained in the Word of God. Family, the number one thing that trains us is the Word of God. A mature Christian grasps this and understands this. Like, it's the Word of God that's going to train me. Train me in how to, to worship Him, how to follow Him. The Word of God is what will train me in good, sound doctrine. I, family, I know there's a lot of books that are written, but the, there's only one book that we should be reading over and over, the Bible. That's what trains us. And not only that, but I love the Christian standard uh, Bible version. It says... Uh, being trained is also nourished. So we're being trained by the Word of God and family. We're letting the Word of God nourish us. In other words, a mature Christian allows not only the Word of God to train them, but to feed their soul. Like, do we let the Word of God feed our soul family? And, and family, that means like we're, we're, we're really reading it. It's not just a five-minute thing. Like, no, I'm going to take time to really meditate and read the Word of God. And family, if you're hearing this and you're going, but I don't really understand how to be trained in the Word of God. I don't really understand how to let it nourish me. I, I just don't really understand how to study the Bible. Then ask. Ask. Because by you asking, you're helping people become mature in Christ as they teach you. Amen? Number two, the marks of mature Christian family is a genuine prayer life. Like, look at someone say, prayer life. Like, family, do we have a genuine prayer life? Like, the Bible says Jesus often, He often would, would slip away to pray, to seek the face of God, to be in His presence. And family, if Jesus, who was God Himself, the second member of the Trinity, had to often slip away to be in the presence of God, to communicate with the Father, then how much more do we often need to be praying and entering into the presence of God? Like family, it's in His presence that we can communicate. It's in His presence where He gives us peace. It's in His presence as we're praying and in the Word of God that we hear His voice. Family, it, prayer is where we get our power. That's how we see mountains moved. Not by talking, but by praying. Seeking God, calling on His name, crying out to Him. Do we bear the marks of a prayer life family? 
and praying without ceasing, like family, that, that, that we should, a goal, a practice we should make of is I want to pray without ceasing where, I, man, I'm constantly in this state of prayer, man, just in the presence of God. Like, that's something we should desire. That, that is a great goal to set. Family number three, the marks of mature Christian. Family, the marks of mature, uh, someone who desires to be a mature Christian, who, who's becoming a mature Christian family, they make disciples and they share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen? Say, make disciples and let's share Jesus. Family, they go together, discipleship and evangelism go together. You can't separate them. Amen? They go together. And family, one who's becoming mature in the Lord understands that God has not only commanded us in Matthew 28 to make disciples, to share His gospel, but family, He's entrusted us. I mean, think about that. We who once were His enemies, we who once were living for ourselves, and now he's, he's radically saved us. And, and he says, hey, I'm going to entrust you with the very message that I died for, that I raised from the dead for. I'm entrusting you that you will share Jesus and that you will make disciples that make disciples. And family, hear me on this. If you're not sharing Jesus and making disciples, you're in sin. I know a lot of times we make sin just about gossiping or, or you're getting drunk or, you know, um, uh, lusting. But family, and, and those are sins, but family, if we're not telling people about Jesus, if we're not making disciples, you're in sin. And so we ought to be asking God, who can I disciple? Who can I share Jesus to? And, 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 and family, if you're struggling with that, again, let us know. We will help you. But God has called all of us to make disciples, first starting in our home and then outside the home. Can I get an amen? So a marks of mature Christian is, is making disciples and sharing Jesus. Uh, number four, another marks of mature Christian family is a good Name. Look at someone and say a good name. Family, we want a good name. And you can't teach someone how to have a good name. Like that's something you have to desire. That you have to long for. And family, you've got to work for it. You've got to work to have a good name. Look at Acts chapter 16. Uh, Apostle Paul is looking for someone to, to take on his missionary journeys, someone who he can raise up and release uh, into the churches that are being planted. And, and family, look what he looks for as he's looking for a mature Christian. It says, Paul came uh, also to Derbe and Lystria. A disciple was there named Timothy, the son of a Jewish woman who was a believer, but his father was a Greek. He was well spoken of by the brothers. Family, did you hear that? He, he hears about this disciple who's what? Who's well spoken of by the brothers at Lystria and Iconium. And Paul wanted Timothy to accompany him. Why did Paul want him? Not only does he hear that this man is a disciple of Christ, but he hears he has a great name. And family, he didn't just have a great name inside the church. He had a great name outside the church. Like, do we have a good name in the church and outside the church? If, if, if we were to go to your neighborhood and talk to your neighbors, do you have a good name? If we went to your workplace, do you have a good name? Like, that matters, family. Are you well spoken of? That matters because what that says, family, is you care about the name of Jesus greatly. You greatly care about honoring Him. And not being hypocritical. Number five, the marks of a mature Christian family. This person runs to Jesus when he or she falls down. Like they're quick to run to Jesus. Look at someone and say, "Be quick to run to Jesus." Family, our our first parents, Adam and Eve, when 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 they rebelled against God, when they fell into sin, they weren't quick to run to God. They ran, they hid, trying to figure out, what, what do we do about this shame? What do we do about this guilt? Trying to find a way to, to move it, 
to, and, and, and be cleansed. It was God who pursued them. Reminding them, there's only one who can forgive you. There's only one who can clothe you in righteousness. That's me. And family, one of the marks of mature Christian is, are we quick to run to Jesus when we fall down, when we sin? Are we quick to run to our Bibles? Are we quick to run to the presence of God and pray? Or do we run away from church, from the Bible, thinking, I, I can't go until I make myself right? Because that's what we're saying when we do that. When we run away from God, I can't be in His presence, I can't be in church right now. We're, we're showing that we're an immature believer. Because we're showing we really don't understand the gospel. We're showing we really don't understand grace. To think that we can make ourselves right, we can't. Only Jesus can make us right, family. And so do we, are, are we like King David and, and we quickly take ownership of our sin? I'm the guilty one. And family, do we see that that sin has broken the heart of God, that has grieved Him, that, that, that causes Him to weep? And do we also see that, yes, we're guilty, yes, we've broken the heart of God, but God, who's rich of grace and full of mercy, we run to Him. Why? Because, family, we know He's not here to condemn us. His Word says that. He's here to forgive, to love, to show us grace. That doesn't mean we can continue in sin. A mature Christian doesn't continue in sin, doesn't make a practice of it, makes a practice of running to Jesus and getting right with Him. And understanding only He can make us right. Amen, family? And family, a good theological term for this is perseverance of the saints. How do we know someone's truly saved? How do we know someone's really mature? Family, they don't give up. When they fall down, they get back up. Like they die in the faith. Perseverance of the saints. They persevere. A mature Believer in Christ's family perseveres, does not quit, doesn't know that word quit. Amen? You can look at someone and say, we don't quit. Like I tell my daughters, that, 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 that word is outlawed in our house. There is no word quit. Number six, the marks of a mature Christian is humble and teachable family. And family, again, you, you can't teach someone to be humble and teachable. My spiritual father, uh, uh, Bubba, taught me this. He's like, man, when you're, when you're looking for leaders, when you're looking for people to disciple, to invest your life into, look for people who are humble and teachable because you can't teach that. And family, James 4.10, humble yourself before the Lord. Why? Because in due time, He shall exalt you. He shall raise you up. We don't... A mature believer is not trying to raise themselves up within the church or anywhere else. We, we, they humble themselves. Why? Because they know God in His due time will raise him or her up. They practice walking in humility. Family, do we walk in humility? Do we make a practice of being humble? Because that can't be taught. It, it, makes, it makes me think about when I used to coach, and you talk to most coaches. At coach family, we love talent, but you know what? We will take a kid who has heart more than talent. Why? Because family, I, I've, I've had talented kids who can't do nothing to help the team get better or win because they're so full of pride. But here's this kid who's not as talented, but he's got heart. And because he's got a heart, I can do something with that. And that helps the team. Are we humble and teachable in family? That also means, can you take criticism? Can you be corrected? See, a humble, teachable, teachable person, family, can receive criticism. They can receive correction. Can you receive criticism? Can you receive correction? Number seven, the marks of a mature believer. Radical grace, family. Uh, man, uh, 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 man uh, someone who's really maturing in the Lord, growing in the Lord, family, they have radical grace. Look at someone say, radical grace. Now look at someone say, do you have radical grace? You can comment, write that down on, right now as you're watching. 
asking everyone else online, radical grace. Family, we're in Guatemala. I'm with Pastor Jonathan, who will be speaking to us next Sunday. And, and we're, we, we talked to this Guatemalan pastor uh, during the, the, the civil war that took place in Guatemala. And, and, and family, he, he was sharing about how one of the guerrillas, the, the communist guerrillas, had, man, had a machete and, and, and family, like, macheted him 27 times. Just like, whack, whack, whack. Because he wouldn't allow himself or his church to, to be a part of their campaign. He goes, no, we're, we're peacemakers. We're about Christ Jesus. So he was persecuted for it, family. And, and he told us after he recovered, he survived, which was a miracle. He went back to the same person, family, that macheted him 27 times. And he shared the gospel of Jesus Christ. And me and Pastor Jonathan, we asked, like, how were you able to do this? And you know what he told us? Because the Bible says, forgive. I still remember uh, Pastor Jonathan's words. He looks at me and goes, ouch. Just step on my foot, Billy. Like family are way that way because the Bible tells us so. The Bible says be radical in showing grace and love and forgiveness. You see, family, a mature believer is not looking for those who are going to show him or her grace. They're looking to show others grace. They're looking to show others forgiveness. They're not ho- having this long record of holding wrongs. But they have this record of saying, no, I choose to forgive. I choose not to hold these wrongs against you. Family, we lack radical grace in the churches right now. We lack it in this nation. Are we showing people grace? Are we too busy trying to have, show people all their wrongs? I mean, praise God, Jesus paid the debt we could not pay, family. And he's not holding this record because if he did, family, we're all damned. And we're to look like him. We need to show radical grace and be grace givers, family. And the number eight family that that marks a mature believer is a radical giver. So not only do we show radical grace, but family, are we radical givers? Y'all have heard me say it and I'll say it again. Family, like we don't understand how blessed we are to be in America. Like we have so much. We were in Uganda last year and family, I was reminded how blessed we are that we get water. Like we're so rich because we have clean water. Like they're dying in Uganda because they don't have clean water. And we'll, we'll just waste water bottles here. Family, 1 John 3.17 says, You who have the needs to help and you don't, how, how, how can you say you love God? Like, family, are we radical givers? Are we, do we understand that what God has blessed us with, He's, he's blessed us so that we will be givers, so that we will bless others? Like, do we look to see how we can bless and meet the needs of people? Do we grasp the money, the house, the car, everything God's given us? Do we grasp the things He's given us? They belong to Him? So that we can serve others, so that we can bless others? Do we give back to God? Are we faithful to Him in our giving? Because a mature believer does that family. Do we examine the best way that we can help that person in need because throwing money is not always the best way. A radical giver, a mature believer in Christ's family will examine what's the best way to help this brother, this sister, this child who is in need. And family, a radical giver uh, man, also is the understanding that do we give of our, our time, family? Not, 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 not just financially, but our time. Like, Are we willing to sacrifice time 
so that we can bless and help others. Maybe it's helping a brother or sister how to budget. Maybe it's, 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 it's helping them, family, do this or that. But, man, a, a mature believer in Christ family, we give our time as well. And then number nine, family, on the marks of a mature believer. Family, they're empowered by the Holy Spirit. Can I get an amen? Look at someone and say, are you empowered by the Spirit? Now look at someone and say, do you have the power? Like family, Jesus tells us in Acts 1.8 that, hey, He says, wait right here and wait for the Holy Spirit who will empower you to be my witnesses. How are we going to really grow in Christ? How are we going to mature in Christ? How are we going to faithfully make disciples and share the gospel? Family, we need the power of God, the third member of the Trinity, the Holy Ghost. And family, we need them every day. The Bible's clear, like pray daily that the Holy Spirit will empower you, fill you, baptize you. Like daily we pray for that. In family, that, that, that there's that understanding of why we need the Holy Spirit. And a mature believer, there's an understanding that I, I have no power without Him. That I'm powerless, I'm useless without the Holy Ghost. We desperately need Him in our lives. Like family, when I was looking for who can disciple me in the ministry, who can help me, family, I looked for men who had the power. Like when they spoke, there was power. Like everywhere they went, people's lives changed. God showed up to the scene. Do we bear that mark, family? Do we long for the Holy Spirit? Do we see the need for the Holy Spirit? And family, number 10, the marks of a believer, family, they exhibit the fruit of the Holy, they exhibit the fruit of the Spirit. So we have the Holy Spirit, and family, the Holy Spirit not only gives us gifts, but family, the fruits. And the Bible is very clear. They shall know us, what? By our fruits. So how do we know someone, a believer in Christ? Do You have all the fruits. It's not, am I missing one? Family, if we're missing one, there's a good chance you're not saved. Like we have to have all the fruits. Now, having all the fruits doesn't mean we, ex- we're, we're, we got it all down. No, we now practice, family. We practice so that, why? Because a mature believer understands that, man, I, I, I want to be able to, to show these fruits to others and, and how to walk in these fruits. Like, I want to set an example to those around me, to, my, to those in my home first and then to those outside of my home. And family, just a refresher, what's the, the fruits of the Spirit? We read this in our series uh, on Galatians, Return to the Gospel. But look right here with me in Galatians. Go to chapter 5. And look right here, family, in verse 22, it says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love. So, family, do we set an example to others in love? Do we set an example to others in joy? Do we set an example to others in peace? Do we set an example to others in patience? Do we set an example to others in kindness? Do we set an example to others in goodness? Do we set an example to others in faithfulness? Do we set an example to others in gentleness? And do we set an example to others in self-control? Like, are we modeling that to others, to the spiritual infants, to the spiritual children? Like, are we modeling that? Are we modeling it to the unbelievers? Because a mature believer family desires those things. And, And to model that well. And family number 11... The marks of a mature believer never stops growing. Look at someone saying, never stop growing, or, or say, never stop learning. Family, we, we never stop learning until God takes us home to be with Him. And even in, hallelujah, we have a lot to learn about His kingdom. But family, we, we never reach this point where we don't have to learn anymore. We don't have to, to grow anymore. And we're always growing, we're always maturing, we're always learning. Look at 1 Thessalonians family, chapter 4. And look what it says right here in verse 1. This is Apostle Paul again, inspired by the Holy Spirit. He says, Finally then, brothers, we ask and urge you in the Lord Jesus that as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God, just as you are doing in that you do so more and more. I love that word. You do so more and 
more. Family, a more mature believer in Christ is wanting to learn how to please God more and more. Is wanting to learn how to walk in the faith more and more. They understand I have so much more to learn. That's, that's wisdom. Wisdom is, man, I don't have it all figured out. I'm not as smart as I thought it was and I have so much more to learn. And then he goes on, family. Look right here, verses 9 and 10. Now concerning brotherly love, you have no need to, for anyone to write to you. And so family, a mature believer in Christ doesn't need someone to tell them that they need to love their neighbor. An infant and a child needs to be reminded of that. Family, what does a, a spiritual young adult, a spiritual child need to be reminded of? For you yourselves have been taught by God to love one another. Like, spiritual parent are, should already have a grasping for that. But look at verse 10. For that indeed is what you are doing to all the brothers throughout Macedonia. But we urge you, brothers, to do this more and more. We see that again, more and more. So family, a, a spiritual adult, a spiritual parent is learning how to love their neighbor more and more. Not just the basics of loving their neighbor, but how can I go deeper in that? How can I love my spouse more and more? How can I love my child more and more? How can I love the people at church more and more? How can I love this person who doesn't agree with me more and more? And then family. Number 12, the marks of a mature Christian. Not neglecting his gift or her gift. Family, a mature believer in Christ does not neglect their gift. Now some of you might be going, I don't know what gifts the Holy Spirit has given me. And this is where you need to begin to ask God first, Lord, what gifts have you given me? You need to read God's Word. You need to be serving in church because as you begin to serve, or there's greeting, ushering, wherever you're serving, you'll begin to see the gifts God's giving you. And you need to ask those who are close to you, those who pour into you. They'll help confirm your gifting to those of us who, who might be an infant or a child, but family, a young adult, a spiritual parent should know their gifting and where God has gifted them. And family, look, turn back to 1 Timothy chapter 4 and look right here at verse 14. It says, Do not neglect the gift you have. It's Paul reminding Timothy, don't neglect your gift which was given you by prophecy when the council of the elders laid their hands on you. Practice these things. So family, that the gifts that God has given us, we should be practicing them. Immerse yourself in them, it says. So practice and immerse. Just as I said in the introduction, those great athletes did what? They, they practiced. They immersed themselves. Why? To, to become even better. And then it says, so that all may see your progress. Family, everyone saw Jordan's progress. Everyone has seen uh, J.J. Watt's progress. Family, God has given us these gifts that we would practice and emerge, and so that people can see us growing. Like people should see me growing in, in, in my preaching, and in the way I, I teach, and the way I shepherd. And the same for you. People should be able to see how you've grown and the gifts that God is giving you. And family, hear me on this. You are in sin if you neglect your gift. You're in sin. And hear me on this, because there's some of us, man, God has really anointed us here. And, and we have some other gifts, but we're really anointed in this gift. And, and, but yet we'll settle for where we're good instead of for where God's really anointed us. Family, a mature believer, that spiritual parent, doesn't settle for good. Family, immerses himself and practices himself where God has anointed them. Can I get an amen? And hear me on this. The body of Christ suffers when we don't walk in the gifts where God has really anointed us. Where he said, this is where I really want you to serve the body. We, family, the body of Christ suffers. And so we, we, we should desire 
to practice those gifts that God has given us so that we're not neglecting the body of Christ and causing the body of Christ to suffer. And then family, the, the last mark I want to hit on, number 13, is watch yourself and your teaching. Family, a mature believer watches themselves and what they teach. Look right here at verse 16. Family, man, it, the churches of America, the pastors of America, we would do well. All those who are in leadership, all of us who desire to be mature believers of Christ, we would do well by applying this verse right here. 1 Timothy 4, 16. Keep a close watch on yourself and on the teaching. Persist in this. For by doing so, you will save both yourself and your hearers. Family, did you hear that? Keep a close watch. Are we doing that? Not only on our life, but what we teach, what we say. Family, all throughout Scripture it says, examine me. Test me. Don't let my heart turn to wickedness. To stay alert, to be on guard. To know that the enemy is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Family, you could be a mature believer and be disqualified. Be knocked out. Be knocked down. That's why the Bible says watch yourself so we're not disqualified. And then he says watch your world views. Family, that's what it means when it says to watch. It's talking about your world views. Are we watching our world views, family? Like, do we have a biblical view or world view? Do we watch our eyes, our mind, our heart, our thoughts, because they're all prone to wonder? Do we keep them in check? Do we know our weaknesses? Our temptations. Because a mature believer in Christ family knows where they're weak. Knows their temptations. Knows their limits. Limitations. And therefore will set accountability. Therefore will be on the watch. Will be on guard. And family, a mature believer is also watching their teaching, it says. And, and what does that mean? Family, God's going to hold us accountable for everything we teach. Some of you are going, oh, that's why I don't want to be a mature believer. So why I don't want to teach. No, family, God has called you to be a mature believer. He's calling you to teach. He's giving all of us an audience. Some might have a larger audience than others, but He's giving all of us an audience. And it's imperative that with that audience, family, that, man, that we, that we teach and that we watch what we teach because He will hold us accountable everything that comes out. And so family, as I close this out, let's go back and look at 1 Timothy 4, 8. It says, rather train yourself for godliness. Family, are we training ourselves? Are we practicing godliness? Growing in the faith? Being mature? We should desire that. For while bodily training is of some value, godliness is of value in every way. Family. It's of value in every way. As this text says right here, it's in value not just for eternity, but here on earth. And so, do, do we desire godliness? Are we growing in it? Are we, are we practicing it? Are we... Are we Working it out, family. The Bible says well, walking out that salvation. Does it mean salvation is by works? That walking out that salvation, that growing in that godliness and being mature, family, what it's saying is, man, I, I, I want to be perfected. I want to look more like Christ with the understanding I'll never be perfect until He calls me home. But until He calls me home, I'm going to do everything I can to become holy, to become more like Him. To, to where I'm a sweet aroma unto God. Because family, by doing that, and persisting in that, family, we, we save both ourselves and our hearers. 
At the end of the day, that's what we want to know, family, when we stand before God. That we were used mightily not only to see ourselves come to know Christ and be saved, but family, that we have a bunch of people with us. That is a life worth living. And it's why we want to be mature believers and bear the marks of a mature believer. Can I get an amen, family? And so, family, where are you at on the five stages of discipleship? First thing we ought to be asking ourselves, where am I at? Am I an infant? Am I spiritually dead and need to make Christ my Lord and Savior? Am I an infant and need to get the basics down to become a child? Am I a child and, and, and need to become an adult? Am I an adult who needs to be pushed to become a parent? Where do you need to grow in becoming a mature Christian? Family, we all, these 13 things I just get, we all have areas to grow. I have areas to grow in. Where do we need to grow? Where do we need to repent? And then family, is Jesus your Lord and Savior? Those of you watching this, is Christ truly your Lord and Savior? Have you repented and surrendered your life to Him? And if you haven't, do that right now. Jesus, save me. But let's pray right now, family. Lord, we come before you right now. We thank you. We praise you. I thank you for this message, Lord, and the word that you had for us. God, I pray that we would long to grow in you. That we would long to be more godly, Lord. That we would long to be more holy, God. That, God, that we would long to be mature in you, Lord. Not, God, for self-righteousness. Not so we can say, look at me. But, God, so that we can bring glory and honor to your name. God, so that the life you called us to live here on earth, Lord, we don't waste it, but we make the most of it, Lord, that, that, that it has value. So that, God, that not only are we saved, but, Lord, the hearers that you have given us, the audience that you've given us, Lord, they come to know you, and when we stand before you, God, God, we can be like, man, look at these people with me who now know Jesus. Lord, help us. Help us to practice. Help us to immerse. Help us to, Lord God, to run to your word. To run to you. Help us to receive you as Lord and Savior if we have not, Lord. God, we love you. We thank you. We praise you. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen and amen. Family, I love you. Feel free to right now to take time and just seek the face of God. If for the first time you're giving your life to Jesus, please reach out and let us know. And family, know this. We love you dearly. I, I miss many of you very much. Feel free to, to reach out. Feel free to give a shout out. But we love you. God bless. And we will see you next Sunday. Amen.